Welcome to the Annie Jennings PR Teleseminar Series. My name is Annie Jennings, and of course, I am the host of the series. Our special guest today is Stephanie Vance. Stephanie is a DC-based author of Citizens in Action: A Guide to Influence in Government, and she's available to us today to talk about her experience with publicity and the building of herself as a top national expert and uh, climbing our ladder strategy. Stephanie has over 20 years of experience working in Washington, D.C., and has master's degrees in legislative affairs from George Washington University. Stephanie Vance has TV and radio experience on major market interviews, nationally syndicated shows, including NPR and ABC Radio Network. So welcome, Stephanie. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, it's wonderful. I'm so happy to have you, and because you are actively working your ladder strategy and some of our other recordings everyone can enjoy also talk about experts who sort of who did it and they came back to us after the fact and said you know I want to come on your teleseminar series and tell people what this was really like for me to be a part of Annie Jennings PR and to build myself up to a strong socially relevant author or expert expert whose opinions are relevant they matter they influence people are loving this so tell us what it's like for you to be, you're, both, you're an author and an expert. And first you may want to tell us a little bit about what it is that you do do and how you help people find their voice and find out how to make changes in government and be able to be heard and tell them about how to access, uh, access the lawmakers because a lot of people want to know how to do that, just don't know how. So you're the expert for that. But tell us a little bit about yourself and then what it's like for you to be in this process. Well, absolutely, um, and it's it's been a great opportunity. I, um, you know, I started uh, in low those many years ago when I got my first bachelor's degree in political science, and my parents insisted that I should get a job. So, I have moved to Washington D.C. and held a variety of jobs as, in lobbying law firms and working on Capitol Hill. Um, and it was really as a Capitol Hill staff person that I. Um, came to recognize that people really don't understand how to effectively communicate with their legislators. Um, most people who've done any advocacy have had the experience of not really feeling like they're being listened to. And part of that is uh, because they're not really delivering their message in a way that makes sense to the lawmakers. So uh, about 10 years ago, I started uh, uh, trying to work with groups to help them better understand how to communicate more effectively with elected officials, and really whether at the local, state, or federal level. So I help them understand things like knowing what they want, knowing who they're talking to, knowing how to approach them, et cetera, um, you know, making sure that you've got messages that are, are personally relevant to the legislator that really connect with some of the issues that they're working on, making sure that you're asking for something specific, all those, all those kinds of good, uh, good ideas. And, uh, you know, have, have over the years written a series of booklets and pamphlets and, and a couple uh, smaller books on the topic, um, most of which were self-published, and I hadn't done a lot of publicity around. Uh, but then I wrote this book, uh, Citizens in Action, A Guide to Influencing Government, which uh, did go through a publisher here in D.C., so had the experience of both self-publishing and working with a publishing house and uh, really wanted to try and get this book into the hands of more people, and that's why I started uh, thinking about a, a publicity strategy and, and working with Annie Jennings. And, uh, you know, it's been, really, uh, it's been really interesting for me because, you know, I have done a little bit, had done a little bit of work before. It's been very sporadic, but I found that when I, I started um, working with Annie Jennings PR and, and uh, doing the radio campaign, uh, the initial radio campaign we did, it really helped me figure out uh, how to hone my message, how to focus my message, and what was really I thought most interesting about it was, uh, you know, my publisher said to me at some point, I don't know what you're doing, but, you know, we keep getting these orders for books, so that's a good thing, keep doing it. So uh, I, I think it's been uh, successful not just in helping me make sure my message is something that's compelling and positioning myself as an expert, but actually in, in perhaps generating a few book sales, so that's been great. Oh, that's wonderful. And I'll tell you, you are a radio show host dream because all I said was, you just tell me a little bit about yourself, but did you notice how prepared you were and how you knew who you were, what you were trying to accomplish, and why it mattered? Well, I think that's really important. I mean, for anyone listening to the podcast, uh, you know, I have had a lot of years sort of thinking about this and and I think, um, you know, sometimes when you come to it too soon and you're not really focused in on your message and what it is that you're, that you're trying to, to help people with, um, you're not going to be as successful in, in narrowing down that message. I, you know, I, I hear so many 
uh, folks and um, uh, met Annie Jennings through uh, the National Speakers Association, which I'm sure many of us are associated with. And uh, a lot of times people are still struggling to find that, you know, what their core message is. And that's so critical, I think, to do before you do a lot of publicity or a lot of this kind of radio or television work, because uh, if you're sort of on there to talk very generally about what you're talking about, your issue, you're, you're not going to be really able to niche yourself as an expert in a particular field. Mm -hmm, that's right, and of course, part of the part of the or the packaging and development that goes here on here that goes on here in our company is that we do tie you into the news of the day, which I think is important for authors and experts because that's really going to be your positioning statements. When you become socially relevant, that means you have an opinion. That means what you say matters. People listen to you. You have the ability to influence others. You have the ability to be known as a thought leader in your field. These are all very strong marketing positions for you to be in in terms of growing yourself as an expert and growing your business as a consultant firm or any of the, any of the other services that you may choose to provide. Now, media training, Stephanie told us, was really important to her. And you can see she's a pro, right? <laughs> the way she answered the question, again, she knew who she was. There were no ums. There were no ahs. There were no... There was no segues or attempt to waste time trying to gather her thoughts. She knew who she was. She knew what her message was, and she knew who she wanted to help, and she knew, what, she knew how to help them. She ended with some points on how they can access their, 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 their legislature better and be heard more. So she knew the whole problem. That was a whole very good nutshell answer. <laughs> and for those of you right who want to listen again, go for it, because that was formula. That was strategy-based, and, and, and Stephanie, you, de you delivered that beautifully. Well, thank you, and I'll, I'll give you your 20 bucks later. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but that, see, that's what we do. All of our authors and experts, we want them to be able to answer that question. Now, well, Stephanie's a natural, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it's true, and I think it, it does take some time to get to that point, um, but the practice that you get, and, you know, as we... You know, as I talked about, sorry, we did the radio um, campaign with you all, and I did get to practice with the folks in your office on how to answer some of those questions well. And they taught me a few really good techniques that I hadn't really thought about before. You know, I used to refer to, quote, unquote, the book. Uh, and now they, you know, they said every time, you know, you've got to make sure you're mentioning citizens in action. And I thought, wow, you know, I keep talking about the book, but I don't mention the name. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and really making sure that you know, what, what listeners are looking for, I think, are tips and techniques and very specific ideas about how they can take the information you're giving them and move forward. Uh, they're not looking necessarily, depending on the show, for a lot of philosophical discourse. So I do try to keep it pretty focused and, and compact. You know, the, the other key thing I think about um, what we're sort of talking about here is is that idea of practice and uh, I have had the opportunity to do some practicing. I mean, by the time we get to uh, the shows that you're putting us on, you know, I think it makes sense to, to have that practice with your staff. But also, we talked a little bit about the uh, RTIR ads that, um, you know, you can uh, advertise in RTIR, the radio and television interview report. And, you know, you'll get a lot of sort of, um, I'm going to say, I don't want to say lesser quality because that will um, maybe not sound like the shows are as good. Perhaps lower listenership, maybe that might be the best way to put it. Um, you get you get a lot of requests for uh, radio interviews from those kinds of shows, and uh, it is a good opportunity to, to hone that message down, to get your key points down, and to make sure that you're really going to be a useful guest to the to the host when you do get to the to the you know top 50 stations and above. I think that's wonderful. That's true. And remember, the, the major shows and the major markets, those are the positioning interviews. People may not know your name, but they know the shows you're affiliated with if they're big enough. They know ABC Radio Network. They know CBS Radio Network. They know CNN Radio Network. They know Associated Press and the Radio Network. These are, these are definers and qualifiers of your expertise, and that's why this is, that's important. Practice interviews, fine. Practice where you can't do any damage. And remember, you don't want to stay too long at those lower levels. Those entry-level interviews, stay there only until you really do you really do sort of know who you are. You can handle a top-notch interview uh, like Stephanie has just discussed. This is important uh, for you to use those entry levels as what they are, entry-level training ground. And that's why radio is a very good training ground, all right, for everything you're going to do, especially for TV. And Stephanie, I forgot to tell everybody the best part. <laughs> well, it's true. So we've been talking so much about radio and how much fun we've, I've been having on it, but I've also... Uh, 
through Annie Jennings had the opportunity to do some TV interviews and uh, the first uh, station that I've worked with, uh, a regional station, a, new, a cable t news station, a News Channel 8, um, has asked me to come back and do some uh, monthly segments with them. So that's pretty exciting. You know, I, I hadn't done a, a lot of television before and uh, went on, was a little nervous, uh, but your, your folks assured me that I didn't make an entire fool of myself and uh, was asked to come back and, and provide mm -hmm. uh, some tips on advocacy. So I, mean, I think one of the key things that really helped with that was when we approached the television stations, um, your folks were very good about making sure that we had some key focus on specific hooks. Uh, the first time I talked with the station was around tax day, and so we really focused in on you know, what your taxes are getting you in terms of your government service. So, you know, and I talked about if you're not happy with it, here's what you can do. And then the next one was really focused on, uh, more recently, health care reform and members of Congress being in their districts during August recess. And the lesson learned for me is, you know, because your folks are the pros, they know, they know how this works, but for me was you can't just say, oh, you know, everyone should be interested in government at all times because it's always affecting you at all times. You've really got to focus in on what's, what's happening in the news cycle. Well, see, that's exactly true. And as you know, we've got the 24-7 News Division. And our goal is to wrap you in the news of the day and create social relevancy for you. Now, Stephanie, you're the idea, you're the, you are the ideal client, as you know. And uh, you were able to really meet us halfway. And that's what we advise clients to do. Know the news as it pertains to your area of expertise. Because that's the secret to really becoming, we'll say, a mover and a shaker in your field. You're the one people want to hire. This is all about how do you leverage your publicity into many areas. Changing the world, number one. I mean, what, how can you help? How can you influence the way people think about themselves and government in your case and their ability to influence government? These are important. What action steps can you give them? How can you clarify what it's like? This is important for you to do that because you're expanding your life's work. You are living your life stream in motion. That's the fun part. That's really fun. When you can leverage that into now consulting, speaking, new book deals, new opportunities, that's where it turns into money, and there's no reason why everyone can't making, be making a lot of money. This is why we are in business. We're in business. This, this is capitalism. We love America for that one reason. You're allowed to make a lot of money. Go for it. But go for it using the tools correctly. So publicity now is used for expansion and development and packaging and positioning yourself at the top. Remember, if you want to do business at the top levels, do show up at the top levels. Be there at the top levels. Now, when Stephanie's on national TV, she's, she's, she's moving with the, with the top level of industry. The people who make it to national TV did not just happen to show up one day and get booked. They jumped through a lot of hoops. Stephanie doesn't always know, and we can talk about this in a minute. What goes on behind the scenes here at Annie Jennings PR? We're developing you, creating you, always bringing you to your next level. And we're doing a lot of uh, a lot of drafts of these press releases, go back and forth between the publicists, while we're adding more and more vital components to our communication with the media to make sure Stephanie is chosen. Stephanie's chosen and not someone else. We want the placements for you. We know how to get them for you. And that's the back office. And you mentioned in our conversation we had in preparing for this that you felt you did get a lot of good support when it came to the news, like really knowing your voice in the news, your positioning and what's going on out there. Well, it's true, and often your staff would um, contact me and say, hey, did you, you know, I, I see this is going on. Is that something you could talk about? And you know, often it was. I mean, sometimes it wasn't, you know, and so I'd have to say, well, you know, I'm not really an expert on that. I don't feel comfortable about that. And your mm -hmm. folks are always like, okay, if you're not an expert, you know, we really don't want to um, put you in a position where you're trying to talk about something that's not your area of expertise. But, you know, for the most part, the ideas um, that your folks came up with really did apply and, um, you know, in several cases turned into these little sort of gems of, of being able to really reach out to the media at the right time. Um, you know, the other nice thing for me is that um, I do have an issue that can you, you can often find a hook for. I mean, there's sometimes when it's a bigger hook than others, but, uh, you know, I do have the, the advantage of having, you know, government is actually a part of everyone's lives every day, and so you can often find these hooks. Um, but I think what your folks really did was sort of help hone those hooks, find the times when they were the perfect pitch, 
And as you're saying, make sure that I'm the person that got booked and not someone else. Well, yeah, a very good example about that is before when when people when when the uh, when Congress was going home before August fourth was it August fourth they go home the, the the pitch at that point was how what's the etiquette of a town hall meeting how do you find out where they are it was the, the it was the how tos of the whole town hall meeting hey as soon as these things started to explode we brought her right into the controversy. You know, why are they getting so explosive? <laughs> and that was important because, see, we didn't stay with the old story. The old story was, tell us how to access these town halls. Well, you know what? That was the old story. Once they started to become very active, people did find out how to access them. They did show up, and now their voices were being heard. And then the commentary continues, and Stephanie enters with, they have a right to be heard. You see? And well, the yeah. the story changed. And then it does change, and your folks are very good at staying on top of that. And I think... Um, you know, the other key thing about this particular situation was that um, as the story changed, the, the sort of message changed. I mean, people did get heard, but then we started talking about were the right people being heard? You know, what happens when you've got um, big interests that are pushing people into town hall meetings? Is that really part of the, the citizen discourse? And, um, you know, if you are uh, an individual grassroots citizen, how do you now get heard on issues that aren't related to health care reform and some of the big issues? And I was able to provide some tips on that. And, you know, it really was, um, it really has been a great opportunity to do what I see as my vision, which is to really help uh, citizens better understand and trust their government. So, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. And everything else will fall into place. As you said, the book sales are happening. Let me ask you another question. I, w- I want to go two places now. One is you did book yourself. You have a friend at an NPR station, which is very good. When we have friends at NPR, we like that. <laughs> but you mentioned there was a lot of like work in going back and forth with that particular uh, producer or contact at that show. Well, it really was. And, you know, it was... Um, it, it may, did make me realize all because you know. But when I talk with your folks, um, they come back to me and they say, "Oh, you know, here's your here's your schedule. Here's when people are going to call you. Here's what's going on." And I'm like, "Oh, well, that seems easy." And then I mm-hmm. I had a friend at an NPR station who I sent the book to, and then she put me in touch with the producers of the Coach on Omni show, and then we went back and forth for several months. And uh, I realized it takes a lot of dogged persistence, you know, if you're sort of doing it on your own. And I did eventually. I uh, appear as a guest on the show, and it was a wonderful experience. And uh, you know, they they did ask me to to uh, find other hooks and come back, um, which I'm looking forward to. But it did give me a whole new uh, level of enthusiasm for the work that you all do because it was it was something to try and uh, get their attention, and you really had to sort of stay on top of it. That's terrific. Also, you know, you mentioned that when the when the host. Knew who found out who you were with, all right, and they said, "Oh yeah, yeah, you're with Annie Jennings here. You'll be okay." Did that make you feel like special? You know, it did. It made me feel like, "Oh, okay. Well, I've got this secret in that maybe others don't have." And you know, it, I, I think that that um, it's a good partnership. You know, when you think of it that way. I mean, you all have to make sure that when I go on the show that you're booking me for, I'm not terrible, and mm-hmm. um, the show producer is going to remember whether I was or not, and you can't, you know, keep sending terrible clients to the producer. So I think there's an uh, an impetus on us as the people on the show to really make sure that we are prepared, that we do have our answers down, that um, we are focused in on what the, the host is saying and what we're, we're, we're trying to get across. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have you as a partner there to help us with that and then to, to get us those ends that we might not have on our own. Exactly, and I have to ask you this one question because a lot of our authors and experts will tell us that book sales were never uppermost in their mind. In fact, they, it was a pleasant surprise to find out they were selling lots of books <laughs> because that changed. What initially thought they thought was a book launch or a book drive or book promotion turned into so much more where they forgot all about book sales. Yeah, I mean, I'm finding that to be the case. You know, it's, o- it's always the case that the book sales come with with the work that you do with the publicity. I mean, my book sales come a lot from my own work doing my presentations around the country, and, and like most speakers, I, I give, uh, you know, 40 to 50 to 60 sometimes presentations a year on uh, advocacy. I work with national groups and local groups and state groups on, on really how to, to contact the elected officials in their own arenas. And, um, you know, I find that the book sales, you know, I generate a lot from that. But 
with the publicity, you know, it's nice that the book sales are generated, but they wouldn't be generated if I wasn't taking some of that extra step to promote the idea that I'm going to be on the show, to remember to say the name of the book, Citizens in Action, not just say the book. I mean, to do all those things that you all taught us so well. So um, it is a nice sideline. I wouldn't suggest to anyone, oh, you're just going to go on the radio and all of a sudden you're going to be a best-selling author. It really does take that uh, combination of things to, to try right. and get you there. Very good. I'm glad you brought that up. You're marketing a book is, a, is like the wheel, and publicity is a spoke. Radio shows is a spoke in that wheel. And then the, the stronger your spokes or the more you have, the stronger your wheel is going to be in terms of book marketing. But when you realize book marketing is just the tip of the iceberg with, with what's possible with publicity, you'll realize not to care so much about book sales. It's not about book sales. It's about how you leverage your publicity into really big opportunities for yourself. I'm sure, Stephanie, that this TV, the regular appearance on a TV show in a major market, and you're working with the top markets in the country now as, a, as their regular expert, that's a big deal. That's going to position you for more opportunities, increased speaking fees, maybe more book deals down the road, because now you're building your platform. You're building your outreach. You're building your significance and influence to the American people. That turns into money. That turns into people trusting you and wanting to hire you to come in and help them speak to their audience because you become a certainty for them. I always love this one story. I, I got the chance to meet the, uh, the head. He, he was moving into our neighborhood. The, the person who booked uh, the speakers, he, big, big pharmaceutical company. We all know their name. I thought, this is terrific. I know they pay the big bucks. Let's find out how to get clients in. And so I wanted to ask him, I said, what makes you, how do you decide who you are going to hire to lead your workshops or do your presentations or speaking events? And here is this really big wib, big wib, big wig human resource director who says, I hire the speaker who's not going to get me fired. <laughs> and I said, oh, wow, that's incredibly <laughs> packed with, with strategy. Yeah. You know, certainty. Yeah. Are you the one? And he didn't care. They don't. It's not about money at those levels. They want a person who's going to perform the outcome. That's all. It's an investment. A few thousand dollars here or there to the companies who are buying investments is meaningless to them. They want the investment. They don't want to hire somebody brand new off the streets, never been tested, to try to come in and maybe maybe learn, hone their skills on their audience. No. They want the skilled presenter who performs each and every time and can prove it. And yeah. Stephanie's platform, right, you're at the level where you can prove you're good. If you're, an, if you're a regular expert on a major show in a major market, that's, that's going to be very strong for your positioning. Well, I think it really will, and I think, you know, I mean, I already start to see some of the, some of the concrete benefits. Um, you know, when I, when I was recently on this uh, public radio show, I, when I got back to the office, I had a couple emails in already. I heard you talk on the show. I think you'd be mm -hmm. great for my group. Uh, you know, oh, whether wow. those pan out or not, I don't know, but it, it does definitely increase my exposure and help people recognize that, you know, I am the person who is a go-to person on this particular issue. And, of course, I'm situated well in Washington, D.C. to be that person. Um, Absolutely. It's nice. And why shouldn't it be you? You have everything going for you. It absolutely should be you. And if we have anything to do with it, which we do, it will be you. Because <laughs> that's what we do here. Yeah. We exist so you guys can be successful. Imagine being able to hire somebody whose sole mission is to do everything they can to make sure you make it big. And that's what you get when you hire us. That's the whole thing. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I you know, I had a goal this year. I I try to pick a, a, a yearly theme, and my goal this year is uh, more publicity, and uh, we're definitely achieving that, so oh, that's great. Definitely. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to add before we, before we do wrap for today? Uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, the the one of the key points I would want to add, you know, for the folks that are just thinking about starting or who are just getting started in this is that, um, you know, the more you do of it, it makes it a lot easier for you. Uh, you know, at first it might be a little intimidating. I would uh, get on shows and, you know, be a little nervous and ask the host, oh, you know, afterwards, you know, is there anything I can do? Can I shorten my answers? Do I need to get more tips in? And, you know, just take that feedback and constantly work with it. Um, your folks have also hooked me up with uh, a media trainer in New York that I'm, I'm planning to go to once this uh, monthly 
uh, tips thing starts going on this news channel so I can uh, make sure that those are not just useful for me in terms of my exposure, but really that I'm doing everything I can to get the information out that I want to get out. Uh, but it does get easier over time. I mean, you do start to feel a lot more comfortable with it. And uh, especially, you know, coming from Washington, D.C., you certainly get nervous about what words you're saying and how they're going to be portrayed in the press. So I'm always very careful about it. But uh, I do think that you, once you have some practice and, and some uh, radio shows under your belt, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to be able to take off, especially if you have a nice focused message that will really help people. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for being our guest today. Great, thank you. My pleasure. I want to remind everyone that Stephanie Vance is the author of Citizens in Action, A Guide to Influencing Government. She has over 20 years of experience in Washington, D.C. She is known as the advocacy guru. So there you go. She knows the insider secrets to getting things done. She's worked in, in a D.C. prominent law firm as a lobbyist, actually for National Public Radio, and has a and also as a congressional aide as well, and you hold degrees uh, in two master's degrees, one in legislative affairs from George Washington University and one in liberal studies from George Wa- Georgetown University. Well, wonderful. You're, hi- you're highly, highly uh, qualified to get out there and kick things <laughs> up a notch. So if anyone has any kind of, see, that's the whole thing is you're qualified and authors and experts have qualifications that allow them to come out with their opinions support their opinions, offer the perspective. From what perspective is she presenting? Well, experience and education. All right, those are good perspectives to to be presenting your information. Speakers everywhere have that. So so I guess my closing message is they can have what you have. (laughs) All right, thanks, Stephanie. We'll see you next time. All right, thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.